Mr. Joseph Knight, a 29-year-old, lived alone and had two pets. He worked at a nearby airport and biked to save money. On March 14, 2018, past midnight, he was biking back to his apartment. Mr. Knight is shown getting off his bike in front of his apartment just before nine shots were fired. He died on the spot. He was a man with no known drug use or gang history. The investigation begins. The police canvassed the area to find evidences, witnesses and surveillance footage. They interviewed Knight's friends and family in order to identify potential suspects. Why would someone murder Joseph Knight? They obtained surveillance footage showing a white Honda Civic with a sunroof following Mr. Knight on his bike through several blocks. The video footage was not clear enough to obtain a license plate or suspect description. There were no witnesses. With no leads or suspects, on 30th March, the police submitted a geoforce warrant to Google requesting information on any wireless communication devices that passed through the same geographical location. In order to understand this story, we need to first understand Google Sensor Vault. Every phone has a location feature or GPS if you prefer. And every one of us has a Google account, right? In your Google account, there is a setting called location history. When it's turned on, Google shows your up-to-date location in its servers which is called Sensor Vault. It's what enables you to see your timeline, the places you visited in Google Maps. Pretty useful feature, right? Well, it turns out, it's pretty helpful to the law enforcement as well. The police can send a geoforce warrant to Google requesting location data around an area of crime. Google complies with the warrant and hands over the location data of phones to the police. Pretty helpful. But what if it's misused? The police received the information months later on October 2nd, showing four devices that passed through the same geographical location as the scene of the homicide. One device closely matched with the movement of the suspect vehicle and was later identified as belonging to one Mr. Molina. Mr. George Molina, whose address is about two miles from the area of the shooting, was listed on the vehicle registration for a white 2009 Honda Civic. The police found the vehicle in the trailer park where Mr. Molina lived and matched it to the suspect vehicle. Mr. Molina's phone was discovered to be on T-Mobile's network and the cell tower information showed Mr. Molina's phone to be in the same geographical location of the crime scene at the time of the murder. A search warrant for Mr. Molina's Google search history was obtained, which showed a search on the evening of the shooting for shootings in Avalandale AZ last night, Sniper I-17 and Phoenix shooter today. On December 13, the police arrested Mr. Molina at his place of work while in possession of his phone and vehicle. They got the guy, right? I mean, they have this insurmountable evidence, right? Right? After the arrest, further searches of Mr. Molina's vehicle and residence produced no guns or shell casings. There was no mention of any motive for the murder. Why would Mr. Molina murder Mr. Joseph Knight? Two of Mr. Molina's friends reached out to the police with the information that they had attended a movie together at the night of March 13th before dropping one of the women at her home sometime after 11.30 pm that night. Molina returned to his home with the other woman. They talked for a bit before she decided to head home and ordered an Uber. The Uber receipt provided to the police shows that the driver arrived at 12.08 am 14th March. She left Mr. Molina's house minutes later at 12.11 am. And Mr. Knight was murdered just a minute after, more than two miles away. The second woman confirmed Mr. Molina's story. But how can the same man be at two places at once? The investigators discovered that Mr. Molina's Google account was accessed on multiple devices including one of his old phones that his mother's ex-boyfriend Marcos Guetta had access to. Mr. Molina told the officers that Marcos Guetta sometimes took his car without his permission. The police were able to verify that by finding a traffic ticket issued to Guetta while he was driving Mr. Molina's car without a driving license. Molina's mother and sister described Marcos Guetta as toxic and abusive and confirmed that he often drove Molina's Honda White Civic and they also stated that he had a gun that he took with him everywhere. Marcos Cross Keta was arrested by Riverdale law enforcement working with Avondale detectives. He was also responsible for a 2016 homicide in India. Mr. Molina was released after six days in jail. He came home to find out that he had lost his job, his car had been impounded, he had been dropped out of his college course for missing too many classes and his name had been demolished on national TV. Now, here's the thing. After a year, he still had trouble getting on his feet. 
and he sued the city and the police for the wrongful arrest. Mr. Molina was wrongfully arrested, his name demolished due to the fact that yes, the police were incompetent, yes, they were negligent, but it was also due to the fact that Mr. Molina had been tablets about his location data. Google sends over allows you to see the places you visited, but that data is not private and law enforcement is not using them appropriately. There's a conversation to be had here. Are you willing to share your up-to-date location with the tech giant and your government? Because remember, location data cannot be anonymized, no matter what the tech giants say. This whole thing is a nightmare. But you should know how your data has been used. Stay safe out there.